Good afternoon. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital, and I want to have a short discussion here of green and yellow zone trading as the basis for understanding our short-term strategies. I want you to consider for a minute our standard frame. So we have this vertical blue line, uh, which indicates that the swing pattern that we're interested in has just fired. And uh, the, the daily candle uh, at the close looks something like this. It, it could be any color, it could be any shape, you know, tail or no tail, it doesn't matter. Uh, what we're interested in is setting up a mechanical frame that gives us a favorable swing trade if everything goes according to plan. And uh, the way we basically do that is we take yesterday's candle and we uh, place a mechanical entry for the swing trade at the green line. Uh, it could be five cents, it could be a small fraction of ATR. Just enough so that we're satisfied that we have some information that the swing trade might actually be working in our favor and we're going uh, to buy it at the green line with an initial stop at the red line which is uh, five cents or a fraction of ATR below yesterday's low. And we uh, think it's going to go to this purple line or we wouldn't be surprised if it went to the purple line. In fact that's where it ought to go if everything behaves according to normal. So we'll call that a profit target for the swing trade. Now, most of the time for calculation purposes I'm just using a retest of the 10 day high which is quite often a swing high. Uh, but it could be other things as well. Uh, observable resistance levels, um, a, a closing of a gap, a uh, test of a 50 or 200 day moving average, something that seems obvious as a target just jumps right out at you. So in general we think of the area between the mechanical entry and the profit target as the green zone or an area that I already want to be long in a swing trade position because it's clearly starting to work. And I call the area between the green line and the red line the yellow zone. And that's an area of indecision. Until today's price moves out of the yellow zone, I can't say yet that we have any directional behavior in the market until it gets to a price that we were not able to even see yesterday. So that would be going long at the green line or being stopped out at the red line. That's where we begin to see directionality. So if we have the green zone above and the yellow zone uh, inside yesterday's range, then the red zone is an area where I want to be out of the swing trade because it's clearly not working or if I want to be going short that becomes my signal to start going short in the red zone. So to summarize, uh, I want you to think of the green zone as uh, a place where we're going to do mechanical trading once the price moves above yesterday's range. So we're going to use scans and systems to find that high probability and high payoff swing trades and any of our swing trade systems or patterns or preferences will work. We're going to frame that trade to look for a 2 to 1 reward to risk ratio on a simple retest of the 10 day high. We're going to enter the trades mechanically when price takes out yesterday's high plus a nickel or some fraction of an ATR. And our initial risk is going to be five cents below yesterday's low, generally speaking, or another multiple of ATR if you prefer. And then once we're in the trade, we'll use the trailing stop of the initial risk, or we can start stair-stepping that up uh, five cents below yesterday's low um, all the way up until we hit the profit target or we're stopped out. And I want you to think of this green zone or green zone trading as the core position on any swing trade that is using overnight or swing trade levels of risk because the swing trade position size is already accounting for the typical size of the gap which is usually less than a range uh, in most cases and so if that's the level of risk that we're managing then that's appropriate for a swing trade kind of a risk and swing trade styles. Now the yellow zone on the other hand uh, is what I call intraday opportunity trading on these mechanical trades that we just set up. But we're looking for tactical momentum. So we start with any green zone trade frame that gave us that two to one reward to risk. And then inside the yellow zone, if I can see a way to buy that target 
where inside the yellow zone I can see two to one reward to risk and simply using the mechanical entry as a profit target then I'm willing to do that. Now if you take that trade you have to tighten up your stop and be ready to take profits if it stalls near that mechanical entry because that's that's the area where it stalled the day before and and then failed. So we wouldn't be surprised if that happened again. So we already want to have a two to one trade frame in hand so that if we do get stopped out there then we already have paid for our time. But if it goes through that mechanical entry, uh, we can do a couple things. We could consider adding another position. Uh, we could simply say that, you know, uh, we just are into the mechanical green zone trade, but we got an excellent entry. And then we just let that carry on as our swing trade with money in hand already. Now, if you yellow zone trade and uh, you took the green zone entry as well, then what we want to do is we want to take that yellow zone trade off before the close so that you only carry a swing trade risk overnight and then try to get back into this the next day with another yellow zone trade if you can see tactical momentum and a two to one advantage and so forth and you can now think of the yellow zone trade as the turbo position that's carrying intraday trade levels of risk whereas on the overnight frame you might have a dollar per share of risk you might be able to manage something like uh, 10 or 15 cents intraday and so you could have a correspondingly large position size or the same position size with much fewer dollars at risk. But basically you want to make sure that you're only carrying overnight as much risk as is appropriate for a swing trade which is usually that first original frame that we set up. So let's take another uh, another taker uh, another closer look at this. So we have our standard frame. Now any swing pattern can get us into this position where we've ended up with a doji or any candle really. And I framed it up in the usual way. We had a swing trade pattern that fired and so I draw the blue line on my chart. I then draw my risk. In this case let's assume that's a nickel. And then I'm going to draw my green line that's uh, a nickel above yesterday's high. And I've picked my profit target at the uh, retest of the 10 day swing high or more appropriate uh, maybe there's a different uh, uh, target. So what our thought is now is that sometime during the next one, two, three, four, five, or six days, uh, we actually expect uh, that that uh, symbol to go through the green line. Now we're in, and now we think it's going to maybe on average over the next five days achieve its profit target. Now one thing that we're going to be cognizant of, as long as it, the pattern never violates the original red line that we've drawn, uh, we can trade this as a swing trade in a number of different ways. We can carry it overnight. Uh, if it goes up and we hesitate and it gets out, uh, then we get out and then it starts resuming its march nor northward, as long as it never violated this red line, we're okay. And we can just call that a continuation pattern and get in. But now sometimes we, we might see on day one of a trade that uh, we might see something like this where uh, we get the mechanical entry or even better we have a we were able able to enter somewhere in the yellow zone and we get an extraordinary move intraday and now suddenly we're looking at on day one technique having achieved most of the profit objective that would have made us perfectly happy if we'd waited five days and that's sort of the essence of paying attention to the yellow zone. Now there's absolutely no reason why you have to do that. It's just that it may suit your style. You may be satisfied with the fact that I've got a swing trade with a favorable reward to risk and a high probability of payoff and a measurable target and a measurable risk and it's favorable in my direction. And if I get, if I get price that opens in the yellow zone, goes through the green zone, Take, gets me into the trade and I'm willing to hold that and let's see how the swing trade works. That's absolutely valid. That's sort of the basis for all this. My general thought is though is that as long as we have a favorable swing trade opportunity over the next one to five or six days, uh, there may be times that during the day we can buy with tactical momentum uh, early in the morning and then as long as uh, each day the swing trade, the original swing trade pattern is still open uh, and valid. We have the opportunity to start adding turbo positions to this intraday. And now as uh, we can keep doing that until 
such time as the swing trade itself is over and then we no longer have reason to believe that this will outperform uh, the market. Now the nice thing about this is that we can carry an overnight swing trade risk and we can start using some of the gains from this intraday trading which is low risk and low pressure. It doesn't have, to, all it has to do is give it a try. You're not going to stick around and try for more. You don't hold on to it. You don't believe that it's going to work. But if the opportunity is there and it rewards you, so be it. Now you can start using some of those uh, wins intraday to fund the overnight position and after one or two days of success intraday uh, the entire swing trade position might be funded with uh, uh, markets money already and that's a very nice psychological place to be in. So to review our standard frame uh, we have a swing trade that fired we frame up the uh, last day with our entry a nickel above our entry a nickel below We've identified the green zone, which is area where I want to be long, the yellow zone where I will only trade if I can see two to one inside this area on a retest of the mechanical entry at the green line. So that means I'm having to uh, trade probably in the lower end of this yellow zone or at least have such a tight stop that I can still see two to one on tactical momentum. And then the red zone either tells me it's time to get out altogether or under certain circumstances like a bear market and an original pattern of uh, a washout or a five day down, a violation of the red line actually is a signal uh, to play the failure pattern in five day downs and washouts. So conceptually now as we go through our daily trading plan what we're looking for are various swing trade patterns or for more advanced traders some of these different styles which uh, allow us to find likely candidates compared to the peer group and not on a relative basis and not on an absolute basis. Or we may have continuation patterns from previous swing trades that are still open. All of these uh, scans and styles and continuations now give us trading candidates that we note in our in our uh, trading plan list. Uh, and then we're going to consider market condition and then any sector uh, or regional notes uh, to frame up our trades for the next day. And then that constitutes our planning. Now our preparation consists of what I call auto framing, the green zone trading, where we take each of those symbols and the reason that we were interested in them. And we, we compute our mechanical entry, our initial stops, our initial targets, and a reward to risk ratio. And now we have a table of, of candidates from which we are likely to see uh, outsized movements in the following day. And now when it comes to execution, we can take a look at initial market action right from the size and direction of the gap. We can consider the behavior of sectors that are stronger and weaker than SPY. And then some of our favorite candidate stocks that are inside each of these sectors, which are going to include many of these candidates that we've identified in planning and preparation. And then using our trade frame of yellow zone and green zone, we can start trading that uh, in a rehearsed, relaxed, uh, consistent manner. We'll be respecting pivot points in the market as likely turning places so that if we have a stock that's going up and a sector that's going up, well, the market's going up. And then we see the uh, S&P or the sector hesitating and starting to reverse at a pivot, then we have reason to believe uh, that the easy money is done and we may want to just bank that. We'll take into account the time of day to decide whether or not we want to stick around longer or whether we've, ha we've had the run that we could expect to have. And so in essence then, that's what we mean by uh, red zone and green zone trading. Uh, and I hope that this helps put into perspective uh, our different techniques, how we use swing trades as trading vehicles in and of themselves, but also as a way to inform and to set up our intraday trading. Thanks for your kind attention. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital saying good trading.